Hello, Washington chiropractors. Hopefully you all had a safe and happy Thanksgiving and are now back in the swing of things in your clinics. Many of you no doubt received a mailer in the last week or two advertising a seminar about billing ostensibly higher paying osteopathic manipulation codes. As you would probably imagine, this generated a slew of questions to the WSCA, asking if it was true, if the course was real, and if it was something our members should invest in. Naturally, the subject matter gave us some pause. So we forwarded the matter to our attorney for review before giving anyone any guidance. Here's what we learned. Washington is unique in that we have a payment parity law that the WSCA helped pass into statute years ago. This law considers certain chiropractic adjustments and osteopathic manipulation techniques to be substantially similar and requires insurers to reimburse the chiropractic and osteopathic CPT codes for those services equally or at least within the relative value unit variation. There is a minor calculation applied to all CPT codes, which allows osteopathic codes to be reimbursed at a rate reflecting the relative value variance, usually about 10 to 12%. With that one exception, state law says that the two professions are reimbursed equally for what are substantially similar services. Because we have this law, our attorney has advised us that the advertised program is likely of little use in this state. This is not to say that it is without merit. Indeed, it may be of use to those who practice outside of Washington. But for those in this state, it is best to have chiropractors billing chiropractic codes and not osteopathic codes. There are several reasons for this. First, the method being taught in this seminar is relatively new and has no track record of its users being audited. Without this historical reference, it is impossible to know whether the practice will be accepted rejected, or worse, result in potential fraud charges. Until those outcomes are known, it is extremely risky for providers to bill osteopathic codes, so the WSDA does not support the proposed practice. Second, the Washington State Legislature was clear in its intent when it created the payment parity law. That is, lawmakers intended for chiropractic physicians to bill chiropractic codes, and osteopathic physicians to bill osteopathic codes. If that were not the case, why create the parity law? either profession could bill the other's codes, the payment parity law would be redundant. And third, chiropractors successfully fighting for codified payment parity did not go unnoticed, either by lawmakers or insurers. If chiropractors start billing osteopathic codes en masse after having achieved that legislative victory, insurers will rightfully call foul, and lawmakers will view the profession as opportunistic and underhanded. This will not help us in the long term, as we try to advance other meaningful legislation and it could actively hold those efforts back, possibly even resulting in the repeal of the current fair pay statute, the only one in the nation for chiropractors. Now, you're probably thinking, that's great and all, but it doesn't change the fact that DOs are being paid more than DCs. And you would be right. However, when you look at the payment disparities on the website listed in the advertisement, you will see that those disparities all fall well within the margin allowed by the payment parity law and CPT standards to account for higher costs of providing osteopathic care. As such, the law is working the way it was designed to. Of course, those figures may not tell the entire story, and it is always possible that osteopaths are being paid above the allowable margins in certain instances. If this is the case, though, the remedy is not to start billing the other profession's codes contrary to lawmakers' intent. It is to allow those charged with enforcing the law to do so. Such disparities, when substantiated, need to be reported to the OIC. If OIC fails to adequately address the issue, then we would resort to a, a legislative fix. Of course, the likelihood of such a fix succeeding would depend on the volume of valid complaints and our ability to move legislation effectively, a task that could become all but impossible if lawmakers start viewing chiropractors as opportunists. So in summation, we're left with the original question, is the advertised billing practice something chiropractors should be engaging in? To that, the association says, not in Washington. Again, this seminar could be of use to those practicing in other states, but here in Washington, we already have a law designed to close the gap between DO and DC reimbursement. And from what we can tell, it's working as intended. These kinds of questions are frequently asked of the WSCA. And although we made some of you wait a bit for the answer, it was with good reason. We don't give haphazard advice at the WSCA, and we stand behind the advice we do give. 
but formulating that guidance takes time to do right. Thoroughly researching these hot topics so that you have the best guidance possible is one way the WSCA is helping chiropractors help patients.